So in this website, or in this lesson, this is unit two in code.org, computer science discoveries, lesson 19. This is the final instructional lesson in unit two. And it is about kind of putting it all together where you, you've learned how to create web pages. When we go to websites, there are usually many web pages um, that you can click on and you can click links on those pages to take you to other pages within that website. So as you are creating a web page, and you can look at this first one here, we can see there are several links. We have our home page. We have a fun fact page. Mosquitoes, why do we need them? I can think of a lot of reasons why I don't want them. And then bite remedies. So those are all links to pages rather than having everything on one page so people have to scroll a long ways. So pretty cool. We are, we notice over here that there are multiple HTML pages and it says to use our inspector tool to see the code that creates the hyperlinks at the top. So let's do that. Let's turn our inspector on. And notice for home, we have something that says a href equals. That's a lot like when we were linking to a style sheet. It said href. It says, hey, look for this particular file. And it says home. Facts need remedies. So these things here match what we see in the HTML files, need remedies, facts, and index, which is our home page. All right. So how do you think the code works? Well, what I think is the href is telling it where to look in the files. And then after that beginning tag is sort of ended there, what comes after is the text that we see on the page. Why do we need them? Bite remedies, fun facts. Let's see if we're right. We're gonna go to the next bubble. Bubble two, lesson 19. And you can see at the top while it's loading, what are hyperlinks? Hyperlinks are what we were just looking at. They are links that take us to other local web pages or even external web pages. If you wanted to um, link to a game download, maybe yours is all about a particular game like Minecraft, and then you want to link it to where somebody can go to purchase Minecraft and download it. You can link it to an external web page or you can link it to local web pages that you've made. So if you want to have a site just about mobs and a site just about different elements and things within about Minecraft, you can organize it that way. So to add navigation to your website, you need to add hyperlinks so you can connect to your individual web pages. And that is done using the A element. Um, and then the text that you want to display as the hyperlink goes between the opening and closing hyperlink tag. The A element has an attribute href, which is a location to link to. The location of a local page is just the file path for that page. So we saw that in the previous example. We can see that here as well. A href Golden Gate Bridge. And then Golden Gate Bridge, how we want it to display on the page versus we're looking for a certain file name. So notice that our file names, remember, can't have spaces and those kind of rules. But over here, we can have spaces because this is what's actually being displayed. And we do want there to be space. All right, look at the working links, see how they work. Add code that will link from the index to the Charles Bridge. And add a code that will link the Charles Bridge page to the index page. So we have the Golden Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, and the Tower Bridge, but we also have Charles Bridge, and it is not here. 
So we want to link from the index to the Charles Bridge page. So we're on the index right now. I'm going to come down here and add a. Remember, we need our href that says, hey, go look for this here. And it pops up. Since we're wanting to link to the HTML, we want to make sure we get that and not the actual image, the JPEG. Otherwise, it'll just be a link to an image. Charles Bridge. And we want it to be in title caps. And then our close tag. Okay. You refresh and save. Ooh, I don't like that it's not on its own line. Notice that they put breaks between each one. So let's put it, let's do that. Let's put a break here so that Charles Bridge is on its own line. Very much better. Okay. Now we want to add code that will link the Charles Bridge page to the index page. So if I go, let's look at one of the other pages first. When we go to the Golden Bridge, we get here. Ooh, that's a cool bridge. It looks like a hand. Notice that if you were to click on this page and go here from the previous one, we can go back to our home page by clicking go back. Go to the London Tower. We can go back, we go to the Golden Gate Bridge, we can go back. When we go to the Charles Bridge, well, there's no way to get back, so you're kind of stuck here without that return to home page. So we want to look at the other ones and see how did they put the go back in here. So, Golden Gate or the Golden Bridge, a href index HTML, go back. I can actually copy and paste, what a great idea, from here into the Charles Bridge because we want the same thing. I'm going to put it right below the top of that paragraph. And let's see if we refresh and save if that pops in there. Oh, there it is. Go back. So now if we click on the Charles Bridge, we can get back to the, all of the other bridges. So that is great. You may click finish once you have linked the Charles Bridge here and you've linked back to the home page, the index page on the Charles Bridge page. All right, bubble three. Here we go. And you can see that's a very effective way to use. You've got a different web page for each bridge. Rather than one web page that maybe has lots and lots of subheadings, it just kind of keeps going forever. It's a good way to organize it. All right, just like images and files, links should have clear names that help someone understand what page they're linked to. So read the code or click the links to see where they go. So this is one, the rose might be the most famous type of flower and even Shakespeare wrote about it. Learn more. Takes us to a page about roses. All right, I have a page at daisy.html. And then please click on my link to learn more about sunflowers because you for sure will not regret it. So you can see they've done it three different ways to take them to pages about those particular flowers. All right. We want to be consistent. Um, for things to be organized and consistent, I think that that's very important. Learn more is not terrible, but here's some good rules for naming links. 
should make it easy to, for the user to know where they're going. Give the link a good description that makes sense even without reading all the text around it. For example, go here or learn more. Don't tell you where you're going or what you're learning. So in other words, learn more might not be the best thing. Um, give the link a name in regular text rather than just repeating the URL in the link name. So HTML follows that daisy.html breaks that rule. So home or home page is easier to read than index html don't link too much text like they did for sunflower that's much too long of a link so we can maybe change this to all about actually Let's do it this way. How about Rose Facts? And then instead of Daisy HTML, Daisy Facts. And again, we want to keep it consistent. Sunflower. You could even, personally, if I was doing this particular website, I would have probably just linked the actual titles up here where it says daisies, roses, and sunflower, personally. And if you want to learn more about daisies, So, we can just take these and Now we got daisy facts like rose facts. Again, it's there's not really a right or wrong answer, but you do want things to follow like a consistent sort of pattern so people can sort of be predictable with what you're doing. So if they figure out what rose facts are, they know that this is going to tell them stuff about daisies and stuff about sunflowers in the same way. All right. Finish. So good descriptions that say very briefly what the person's going to be looking at. Don't just link to the file name, but actually link to a description. So follow the same rules for naming HTML pages that you need, did for naming images. So remember what those were? If not, it's right up here. It should, you should avoid special characters, avoid spaces, use dashes or underscores instead. Keep the names as short as possible, but still have a clear meaning. And make sure it has a specific meaning so you know what the page is. C.html, it's supposed to be about candy top facts about candy. So we're going to rename that candy. The next one is about scotcharoos. How to make scotcharoos. I have a class coming in just a second. And then index we can leave alone because that is what we normally call our home page. And then this new one is how to juggle. So maybe we just rename that juggle. Now we know we have a candy, a juggle, and a scotcharoos. 
It's an interesting collection. All right. So, on that note, since I have a class coming, I'm going to stop here and the next one it talks about the navigation bar add the same navigation bar to the other three pages that helps you find your way around a site you notice like on code.org a lot of places like it has this navigation bar I know I can go back to my dashboard by clicking code up here um, it's got things like my profile and stuff like this that I can go directly to, um, which is very helpful, no matter what, where I am on their website. So unicycle, bicycle, and tricycle. When you click on tricycle, unicycle, tri bicycle, and tricycle should be on at the top of each one of them. So. That's what we want to add in here and make sure that we can get back also to the index as well. All right, on that note, I'm going to end the recording before our students start arriving. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope that if you need any help, please feel free to reach out. For my class, this is an optional lesson. So I encourage you to certainly reach out for help if you need it, and have a wonderful day.